rise for the Star Spangled Banner. Please be seated. Good morning, board members, administration, faculty, family, friends, and the class of 2023. And welcome to the 2023 commencement ceremony. We are here this morning to celebrate the accomplishments of 19 seniors who in just a couple of hours become our newest group of alumni at the Q Forest School. Class of 2023, I am honored to stand before you today. You are about to embark on a new chapter in your life, and I am thrilled to be a part of the momentous occasion. To the families and friends in the audience, congratulations to all of you. For those who had me in eighth grade, I would like to say that you have all grown up as, as individuals and come a long way from torturing me. But I can't say that. So be completely candid. The senior meetings that Mr. Panoro, Ms. Karate, and I had to sit through this year were possibly worse than the eighth grade history classes. And I don't even want to talk about recess. I won't say names, Cairo, but... <laughs> If I had a dollar for every volleyball and soccer ball that went over that fence, I could retire. But in all seriousness, if I were to celebrate anything about the students in this class, it is their ability to pivot when plans don't go accordingly. The resilience, strength, and maturity that you have shown throughout the years at, in high school is commendable. I had always thought everything worked out as long as you had a well-constructed plan. And that planning always led to one being happy. As many of you know, I am an alum of Q Forest. In June of 2008, when I was sitting on the same stage as all of you right now, also sweating, I thought <laughs> I had my entire future planned. I would become a public school teacher or go to law school. I would move into the city after graduating college. I would get married at 25. I would have two kids by 30. But. None of those things happened. Despite all of my planning, things didn't work out the way I anticipated. I graduated from college, I moved back to Forest Hills, I began working at an independent school. I dated somebody for five years only to realize he wasn't the one. I moved back home with my mom and I had to start the dating game all over again. In other words, my plan didn't work out. I, wasn't, I was 28, I wasn't a lawyer or a public school teacher, I wasn't living in New York City, I was not married, and I did not have any kids. And while this may seem dark and sad, please stay with me, I am not having a midlife crisis. <laughs> while you might not realize it, all of you had your high school experience not go according to plan. Your class faced an incredible amount of uncertainty, more so than any other graduating class that has graduated before you. The 2019-2020 school year was supposed to be your first year as high schoolers. It was supposed to be filled with excitement and fun. Your first year of Model UN, mock trial, varsity athletic competitions, upper school dances, movie nights. But your freshman year was unlike any other, and you were forced to have your plans cut short. 
Second semester of your first year of high school was spent at home, apart from each other, and consisted of learning on a screen. Your social life came to a halt as the entire city shut down. Your sophomore year was also unconventional, with some of you remote the entire school year, and others in person watching your faculty, and I might add talented faculty, navigate the hybrid learning environment. For those of you who were in person, you had to learn new ways of entering and exiting classrooms, eating lunch at single tables, social distancing, all while, all while wearing masks. Junior year, the most difficult year of high school, seemed a bit more normal as all classes were in person and sports resumed. But you still had to wear masks, to socially distance, to eat at separate lunch tables, not to mention you had to endure weekly COVID testing. And all of this occurred while dealing with the pressures of junior year, preparing for the SAT and ACT, and beginning to think about your future college career. And then came your senior year, your final year of high school and what was going to be the year truly seemed the most normal. Mask optional, sitting in groups at lunch tables, no more weekly COVID testing, no more social distancing, no more remote or hybrid learning. Yet due to the fine New York City construction delays, which maybe our speaker could talk to later, <laughs> you began your year on Zoom, something none of you had planned. Despite all of these curveballs or changes in your plans, you all persevered. You have all grown into people you are today, the individuals next, well, not next to, but in front of whom I am proud to stand and deliver this speech. I may not have taught all of you, but I can say with confidence that you are all impressive individuals who are destined for great things. If I've learned anything in my life, it is that things don't always go according to plan no matter how meticulous of a plan one has. But the obstacles or curveballs that we are thrown are what give us excitement in life and make us the people we are. Sure, I didn't go to law school. I didn't work in the public school system, but I ended up at the school that shaped me into the person I am today, the place I consider my second home. I get to work with students other educators could only dream of and among faculty who genuinely care about their subject and their students. I became an administrator, a career move for which I had never planned. Sure, I didn't get married at 25, but I did meet the love of my life at 28 and I married him at 31. I didn't move into the city as planned, but I get to live in my hometown, a five minute walk to my sister and a 10 minute walk to my mom. And while I may not be a mom yet, I am the amazing aunt, I'm not amazing, ooh, Freudian slip. I am the aunt to my amazing nephew and niece, <laughs> whoops, Jordan and Sophie. My plan may have failed, but I did not. I cannot imagine having or surviving the high school experience that you have had. However, this experience has prepared you for the future of handling challenges and twists in your own personal plot, twists and challenges I did not encounter until my 20s. So have a plan, but remember, if things don't go according to plan, that's okay, because it might end up leading you to having an even better and happier life. After all, I wouldn't be standing here giving this speech if everything went according to plan. You all had plans for what your high school years would be like, and I'm pretty sure they did not consist of surviving a pandemic, social distancing, learning remotely over Zoom. Your high school experience was not anything anyone had planned, and yet here you are, strong, resilient, kind, hardworking, and ready to take on any challenge that comes your way. Congratulations to the class of 2023. I can't wait to see where life takes you. And now, I'd like to introduce our head of school, Ms. Tiffany D. Trotter. Good morning, board members, administration, faculty, families, friends, distinguished guests, and most importantly, the remarkable class of 2023. 
Today, we gather here to celebrate a rite of passage for these young people behind me, a celebration of all they've accomplished in the first 18 years of their lives, and an opportunity to bid farewell to this chapter as they begin a new one. This class is special to me. When I first arrived at Q Forest to interview for the head of middle and upper school position, it was two then seventh graders who were tasked with touring me around the school. <coughs> I was on crutches at the time, and as we all know, Q Forest is the land of stairs. <laughs> so rather than give me a tour, Lauren Wilkes and Matthew Pena sat and told me all about their experiences at Q Forest. At one point, I asked them to draw me maps of the school so I could get a sense of some of the spaces I couldn't visit that day. What emerged from Lauren's map in particular is something about which I still tell prospective families to this day. There were two defining features of Lauren's map. First, it looked like a rendition of the game Shoots and Ladders. <laughs> Stairs descending in one place somehow magically transported you to another spot on the opposite side of the map. To this day, the physics behind how one can descend the stairs in the middle school hallway, walk maybe five steps, and emerge in the science rotunda when the middle school hallway is at least 30 feet long. Confuses and amazes me. The second feature of Lauren's map that stood out was the way that she had marked every single middle and upper school teacher's classroom and every administrator's office and every staff member's office. And she knew all of those people and could tell me about them even though she herself was new to Q Forest that year. That, more than anything, told me that this is a community that welcomes and embraces all who enter, and that the bonds that are formed here extend beyond what, at another school, would be considered one's place. When I began working here that fall of 2018, Gabby and Cameron were among my first advisees. Over the last five years, I've watched this group of young people grow, make friends, and welcome new ones, wear scrunchies, as bracelets to show who they were dating that week. <laughs> Test limits and patience and discover themselves, emerging as leaders in this community and empathetic, understanding community members. These are the people who kick the soccer ball around with the second grade and who let the younger kids chase them. These are the people who, for their senior prank, built towers out of desks in some of the classrooms emptied other classrooms entirely of their furniture and moved the slide from Aldo's Green Inn instead, and made yet more towers of mixed furniture in the main rotunda. I happened to still be at school that evening, so when I saw the main rotunda towers, I told them, those have to go, because we wouldn't want any of our youngest lower school students who were then in aftercare to run down those stairs and through the rotunda to greet their parents and have something fall on them. Oh, okay, they said, no problem. And they took it apart and toilet papered the space instead. <laughs> this is an eclectic and loving, fun-loving group that is headed off to new adventures. And so as we say goodbye for now, I wanna share a couple of lessons that I am continually learning and relearning in hopes that while not new, they'll serve as good reminders for you in your lives. In short, I'd like to talk about the power of the people in our lives, for good and for ill, and the deep influence stories have on us, both our own stories and those of others. Now to begin, I'm gonna start with a reflection exercise that will occur in two parts, one about you, and one about your closest circle of friends, colleagues, and family, which ultimately, is also about you. So I'm gonna ask someone, everyone here to do something a little unorthodox for a graduation ceremony. Please take out your cell phones. They should be silenced, preferably on airplane mode, but take out your cell phones. You too. And open whatever note-taking app you use. Grab a pen and pencil, pen and paper. All right note-taking app. 
I would like you to write down three to five words or phrases that represent the values and or ways of being that are most important to you. No more than five. Values and ways of being. For me, those ways of being and values are honesty, service, joy, movement, and connections with others. Take a look at your list. Those words should represent the kind of person you aim to be and the kind of life you aim to live. Next, oh, we're not done. Write down the names of the five people with whom you spend the most time. You can think about your family, think about school or work, think about your friends, and write down those names. Five people with whom you spend the most time. What's your list? Now, in looking at your values and ways of being list, and then looking at the list of your friends, colleagues, and family members, do you see any connections? If so, excellent. And if you don't see any connections just yet, hold that thought while we turn to the first lesson I continually relearn, which is the immense influence of the people who are part of our lives. I've heard it said that we are the sum of the five people with whom we spend the most time. As we sit or stand here today, poised at the edge of a new beginning for our soon-to-be graduates, let's pause and consider the truth in this statement. The relationships you have fostered during your lives until now have played an instrumental role in shaping your thoughts, beliefs, and aspirations. The individuals you have chosen to surround yourself with may have lifted you up, inspired you, and propelled you forward. They may have challenged your perspectives, celebrated your victories, and provided unwavering support. On the other hand, it's likely that some, if not all of you, have also had the unpleasant experience of discovering that some of those in your circle didn't really have your best interests at heart, or perhaps influenced you in ways that led you to make decisions or behave in ways that you later regret it. This is normal. We humans are social animals and it's natural to be influenced by others, so there's no use in fighting it. Rather, we must be deliberate in choosing who gets to be closest to you. Yeah. Pick people who inspire you, who think differently and challenge you, who will be honest with you even if it means telling you something important you don't want to hear, and who will be there when you call at three in the morning because you feel like your world has come crashing down. And please, don't think that this applies only to the people who are physically present in your lives. It doesn't. In this interconnected world, we have the privilege of connecting with extraordinary minds and inspirational fi figures from every corner of the globe. Through literature, podcasts, online communities, virtual mentors, we can expand our circle of influence beyond geographic boundaries. The same is true for books and media and transcends time because 2023 certainly doesn't have a monopoly on wisdom, brilliance, inspiration, or ideas that challenge us. So as you venture forth into the next chapter of your lives, be intentional in choosing the individuals with whom you surround yourselves. Cultivate relationships that foster growth, learning, and collaboration. Embrace connections that push you beyond your comfort zone and ignite your passion for continuous self-improvement. Yet, as you choose your inner circle with an eye toward becoming the kind of person you would admire, don't forget to remain mindful of this second lesson, the seductive power of our stories. We've all encountered a broad range of stories in our lives, happy stories and sad ones, terrifying stories, uplifting stories, strange and confusing stories. The one thing they all have in common is their creation in the minds of human beings, whether they are fact, 
fiction, written, oral, or visual. And the mind is a powerful and crafty thing. Think back on your own experiences. Have you ever heard something about a friend or another person that shocked you, enraged, or perhaps hurt you? And have you ever then later learned additional information that changed the narrative completely and left you with the realization that the cause for shock or anger or upset never existed? If so, you were seduced by a story. And it happened because, as we've all experienced, in the absence of full information, we all will fill in the blanks on our own. But what gets filled in and what we interpret based thereupon isn't always accurate. And we don't just do this with the stories we hear from others. We do it to ourselves. Many of the years ago, my then ex-boyfriend Mark and I broke up, and he started dating a woman named Becky. Becky and I had never met, but because Mark and I remained friends, he told me all about her. And in my mind, I began to construct this woman who was just absolutely amazing. She became larger than life. I mean, she was gorgeous, she was smart, she was funny and quick-witted. She was athletic, comfortable in her own skin, no matter the context or the people around her. She was the kind of person who could mesmerize a room. Now let me pause here. Class of 2023, you've all had at least 14 years of education, and in that time you've developed some powerful skills for creating and shaping narratives. At some point in your educational careers, I'm sure many have asked, when are we ever going to use this? Well, here's an instance when what you've learned in school is something you can and should use outside of it. Use all of the skills you've learned to shape narratives and craft those that will uplift and inspire you and motivate you in the best possible ways. And don't worry about becoming delusional. If you've chosen your inner circle of friends and family well, they will keep you on course. Next, use the many critical thinking skills you've developed to question and dissect those stories and any story that causes fear, upset, or distrust, whether they're the ones you hear, read, or see in the world, or, more importantly, like me in that moment, the ones you've created yourself. In my case, I didn't put my storytelling under a microscope until I finally met Becky and realized that she was nowhere near as impressive as I'd imagined her to be. When I then stopped and thought about it, I realized that the lesson in my story ultimately wasn't about Becky at all, but about how readily I believed a story that made me feel small in comparison. A story of my own creation seduced me. These stories, especially the ones we tell ourselves about ourselves, can possess an incredible influence over our lives for good or ill. They absolutely shape our beliefs, define our identities, and guide our actions. So when those stories empower us, they help us move towards our dreams but our narratives can sometimes be restrictive, limiting our potential and hindering our progress. We become attached to the stories that validate our self-perception, even when they no longer serve us. Our stories can hold us back, trapping us within the boundaries of comfort and familiarity and ease, but also fear. They can prevent us from seeing ourselves clearly, exploring uncharted territories, embracing change, or discovering our true capabilities. So as often as you can, step back and really examine the stories that shape you. And when you can't see them clearly enough to tell up from down, rely on those five closest friends, because it's at the intersection of relationships and personal narratives that we find our greatest opportunities for growth. If we choose wisely, the information we consume and individuals we surround ourselves with have the power to challenge our stories, encouraging us to rewrite and expand them. They can inspire us to step outside our comfort zones, embrace new possibilities, and redefine the narratives that shape our lives. When we're feeling low, all we have to do is look around at those closer to us and remember, you chose them because they help you be the best version of yourself. And they chose you because you do the same for them. So to sum up, as you leave KF's walls, to embark upon your life's next chapter, remember that you possess the power to curate your relationships and shape the narratives in your life. Surround yourselves with individuals who believe in your potential. Critically examine the voice in your head and question the validity of its stories. 
choose those that embrace change, resilience, and growth. And above all, have the courage to rewrite your story if it no longer aligns with the person you aspire to be. Class of 2023, congratulations. Go forth and craft greatness of your lives, whatever that may look like for you. I, for one, can't wait to see it unfold. Thank you, Ms. Trotter. It is my pleasure now to introduce our first senior speaker, Cairo Gordon Somers Archer. Welcome friends, family, the Board of Trustees, faculty, administration, and other members of the Q4's community. I have been a student here for 13 years, and I can happily say it is my second home. My real home is actually five minutes down the road, which might surprise my teachers since I'd barely get to school in time. <laughs> but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. KF was a family affair right from the beginning. I promise I wasn't going to cry, but <laughs> <laughs> KF was a family affair right from the beginning. Thirteen years ago, my two older brothers, my father and I all joined the KF community. By my junior year, I was the sole member of the Gordon Swimmers Arch crew, left at KF, which was a bit of an adjustment for me. <laughs> After all, I always had my brothers and my father to fall back on whenever I needed help, or got in trouble, which was pretty often. <laughs> but I quickly realized I had a family here and a support system. My classmates, students in other grades, and the faculty and staff. This is one of the things that makes Q4 such a special place. It really is a community. Over the course of my time here, I made everlasting friendships and memories. Whether it's being a part of the change makers in law school, student council in the middle upper school, or all the different clubs and athletic teams that opened up new experiences for me. Going to the lower school teachers and helping them with their classes or playing soccer and basketball with the lower school students during my lunch periods was always a joy. I loved giving tours of the school when I was in middle school. I loved helping Ms. Karate and Ms. Sanchez cheer with the scoreboard and cheering on our various sport teams. I love participating on so many different sport teams and the lessons I've learned from my coaches and teammates that helped me become a better leader and athlete. I even love the moments that weren't so amazing, like helping Ms. Trotter and Ms. Sanchez with the tedious yearbook project where I had to write down all the names of every alumnus who played sports from 1967 <laughs> to the present day. Phew. <laughs> Or every time I got in trouble for repeatedly kicking the ball over the fence <laughs> accidentally and then running and hiding from Mr. Pernoro. And by the way, that kicking the ball over the fence thing, I started that in middle school. But back then, it was Miss Lowry who would chase me down and take me to my father. On a serious note, we have learned so many vital lessons from this community, and that is thanks to the faculty, staff, and administration. I thank all of you for your role in my educational journey and your patience with me. Q Force is a special place, a safe place. Thank you, Mr. Verney. A warm place, a nurturing place, a place where I've always felt supported. Shout out to Ms. Green, who is a very special person to me. A place where Carlos, Fred, and Harold always kept an eye on me. Actually, they kept an eye on all of us. Thank you, guys. KF is a place where teachers are always patient like Ms. Varsos, dependable like Ms. Perez, and always providing guidance like Ms. Garfinkel and Mr. Polk. There are two teachers who are extra special to me, Ms. D and Ms. Vasio. They have had my best interests at heart 
through all my ups and downs. They were stern when they needed to be, but always showed me love and compassion. We are all so lucky to have both of you in our lives at critical periods of our development. They both worked very closely. With my father holds them in high regard. I salute you both. And finally, thank you, Ms. Trotter, for taking the charge of this goal at its most challenging time and being a great leader throughout it all. And now, to my classmates. Today is a testament to all of our hard work throughout the past four years. We certainly had our challenges and obstacles thrown our way, like the beginning of our high school career during the height of a pandemic. But we have grown and learned from these challenges and became stronger than ever. Today may be the end of one chapter, but it's also the beginning of a new one. I encourage all of you to experience life to the fullest and never forget your roots. Expand the boundaries in which you travel, but never forget the imprint your feet made along these halls. Be open to evolving, but remember the mark your character left on the culture of this school. Wherever you end up, your support system will always be here to back you. Let us raise a torch that is the education and unique experiences that Q4s has provided us to the path ahead. My fellow classmates, to the top of our next journey, thank you. Thank you, Cairo. I wasn't planning on crying until much later, so I only brought one box of tissues, but now I definitely am probably gonna need more. Um, I will now present the Caridis Trophy, which is awarded to the senior who has achieved the highest academic grade point average for the four years of secondary school. The class of 2023 recipient of the Caridis Trophy is Lauren Wilkes. <laughs> now, coincidentally, Lauren, stand back up. I would like to introduce <laughs> Lauren Wilkes as our second senior speaker. <laughs> Members of the board, faculty, administration, parents, friends, relatives, and the class of 2023. I say to you this morning, oos. Now, many of you may be wondering what in the world I just said, so allow me to share an anecdote with you. Oos is a word used by martial artists to demonstrate respect. It is said from student to instructor and vice versa. Oos indicates discipline, humility, and not only respect for yourself, but respect for those around you. As a martial artist, I say oos every time I step onto the mat. And every time I put my hands at my sides, start bowing and say, Oos, I'm humbled. I'm humbled because I'm surrounded by people who are more experienced than me, more skilled than me, and more dedicated than me. Sometimes I even mess up, and I'm corrected. At first that can be frustrating, but slowly you see yourself improve. And eventually you appreciate those mistakes. I'll even go as far as to say, those failures. So why bring this up? After all, I'm not getting my black belt today. Well, I've come to learn that from those failures, that those failures are not things to run away from. And Q Forest has taught me to take those failures and use them as stepping stones towards success. 
Over my six years at QForest, the tight-knit community has granted me the unique privilege of having teachers who truly know me. They know what I'm capable of and how high I can reach. That is special. It is special to have teachers tell you they know you can push further, expand more, and even do better, because as much as we would like it to be, it's not the great jobs or the you nailed it's that push us towards success. Those help us remain stationary. The you can do betters are what lead us to where we strive to be. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, it's not the destination, it's the journey. Now, you all may be wondering why I decided to talk about failures on this beautiful, exciting morning. After all, today we celebrate success. We celebrate our achievements, not just as students, but as individuals ready to develop our own futures and shape the world around us. So why the lecture on failure? Often, especially as students, we become so encapsulated in our success that we forget what allowed us to become successful. Today, for instance, we're gonna clink glasses, smile ear to ear, and maybe even scream a bit. <laughs> we won't sit back and think about the bumps in the road, the stumbles and tumbles, or the scraped knees on the way to this glorious moment. We're afraid, deep down, that recognizing the momentary failures along the way will somehow discount the monumental accomplishment that we celebrate here today. I would argue that they will not. To the contrary, I believe it is the recognition of those moments where we've fallen down that make getting back up all the more meaningful. After all, without knowing that we have the potential to do better or fix our mistakes, what is there for us to strive for? I also bring this up today because as the graduating class, we are about to walk out these doors and embark on a long and exhilarating journey. We'll have goals and we'll strive to reach them. But on the journey, we'll take wrong turns, get flat tires, and run over bumps in the road. Over the past year, our teachers have told us that we'll succeed and we are prepared to go forth and expand our horizons. But being prepared to win also means we are prepared to lose. We are starting a new chapter, and to expect that we will never mess up or never fail is just delusion. But recognizing that we have bounced back from defeat in the past helps us keep faith in the notion that we will bounce back once again in the future. I also thought a speech of this nature was particularly special for our class. Allow me to take you on a walk down memory lane. Those of you in the audience, both faculty and parents, who were here back in 2017 or 2018, will remember the reputation of our class. The most rambunctious, boisterous class in the school that completely exhausted our teachers. I think I can go as far as to say even we didn't think we'd grow out of that one. <laughs> but the faculty and administration at Q Forest guided us. They reprimanded us and weren't afraid of telling us that we could and should do better. Well, I think what you see before you today speaks for itself. Sitting before you today are some of the most talented students I know. Students who are varsity sports captains, amazing tennis players, robotics champions, classical pianists, talented artists, and academic intellectuals, and each one of them a kind and generous individual. I would say to everyone on this stage, let our 13-year-old selves be a reminder to our future selves that it is normal and even beneficial to fail, as long as you make it a goal to learn from your mistakes. And as you all can see, I think we made a pretty amazing transformation. Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. Once we step outside of these walls, we can feel secure knowing that we know not simply how to succeed, but how to fail. It is not easy to embrace those mistakes that make us feel as though we won't be successful. But the guidance and teachings we've had here at KF have taught us otherwise. My peers alone have taught me otherwise. They know what I am capable of, and likewise, I know what they are capable of. Together, we have supported one another through both our victories and our defeats. We are prepared to step into the world, embrace the challenges thrown at us, and in KF fashion, we will rise to the top. In martial arts, you learn to defend yourself. You learn to block and shield yourself from strikes against you. Sometimes, however, you get hit. And in fact, you might get hit more than once, and it'll hurt. But gradually, you don't just block the punch, but you actually punch back. And eventually, you knock them out.
Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. The presentation of the roses is a tradition at Q Forest where our graduates have the chance to give thanks to someone in the audience who has been instrumental in their education. This year's presentation will occur in two phases. First, we will now all enjoy a slideshow presentation wherein our soon-to-be graduates name their rose recipients and how these wonderful people have enriched their lives. Then, at the conclusion of the ceremony, the graduates will pre proceed outside, pick up their roses, and present them to their recipients informally outside. Please enjoy the first phase of the presentation of the roses. I would now like to introduce our third and final student speaker, Michaela Brown. I didn't want to write this speech. <laughs> I dragged my feet and I was determined that I did not need to do this despite wanting to. I struggled to write one word. I didn't know where to begin. 
After a bit of soul searching, something I try to avoid, it turns out that my issue wasn't with the speech, it was with the occasion for the speech. I wasn't just graduating, I was saying goodbye. And it surprised no one more than me that I wasn't ready to say goodbye. If you'd asked me or any of my teachers last December, after I'd gotten into college, if I was ready to move on, they would have said yes, quite emphatically. And I would have too. You see, I'm what is affectionately called a KF lifer. I started here when I was four, and I'm now 18. You can do the math, but I've basis, basically spent most of my life inside this building. Kyra, Gabby, and Eva can certainly relate. Kidding aside, this school and the people who embody it have shaped who I and my classmates are. Our teachers at KF taught us much more than just math and literature. They taught us how to be the best human beings we can possibly be. Each of us is walking away with a solid foundation for making good choices in life, knowing how to be polite and kind even when we don't want to be, knowing not to be underestimated nor be ignored, knowing that you often get what you give in life and that giving is way more important than getting. Our teachers have been amazing role models and they have on occasion been our friends. I pity the students who will not have the opportunity to enjoy the smug, arrogant, and yet brilliant classes led by Dr. Spellman. <laughs> Mr. Panora would be the other most influential teacher in my life. He has empowered me, challenged me, and confounded me. But in the end, he has helped me be passionate about math and confident in who I am. Most of the people who helped us become who we are today are here in this gym. And so I've realized that this goodbye is much harder than I had anticipated. I always thought I wanted to move on to bigger and better things. Emphasis on bigger. But as they say, bigger is not always better. KF is small, but its impact on our lives has been huge. And so I want to thank everyone here for having such an important role in all of our lives. Thank you, and I will miss all of you. Thank you, Michaela. At this time, I would like to acknowledge the recipient of our Lifetime Achievement Award, which honors students who have attended Hugh Forest from kindergarten through 12th grade. Will the following students please come to the edge of the stage to receive an applause in honor of your lifetime achievement and take a photograph together. Audience members, please hold your applause until the final name is called. Michaela Brown, Cairo Gordon Somers Archer, Gabrielle Hart, and Eva Sarter. Congratulations to our Lifetime QFAR students. Yesterday, members of the QFAR community gathered in the Upper School Library for the annual Hall of Fame induction ceremony. This year, two individuals were inducted into the Hall of Fame. The first individual to be inducted into the Hall of Fame is the late Miss Claudette, Claudette Charbonneau, who worked at QFAR from 1962 to 1963 as an English teacher. While only being at QFARS for a year, Ms. Charbonneau was a groundbreaker and left an everlasting mark on her students. The second individual to be inducted into the Hall of Fame is current History Department Chair, Social Studies Instructor, and Model UN Advisor, Gary Gordon, who has been at QFARS for 25 years. I've had the privilege of having Mr. Gordon as my teacher 
and of working with him in the history department before assuming this current position. I can say with certainty that there is no one more deserving of being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Mr. Gordon is here with us today. Mr. Gordon, please stand up and receive applause in honor of your induction and commitment to Q Forest. At this time, I would like to acknowledge three members of the QFARS community who will not be returning next year. And for those of you who are at the celebration of service event in the library on Friday, don't worry, I have tissues. <laughs> and for those of you who weren't, I apologize. <laughs> when combining their years of service, the total amount is over 80 years. We have all learned so much from these three individuals. Dr. Spellman and Ms. Spellman have set examples for many, including myself, of what it means to be a strong, magnificent educator and a person who stays true to their beliefs and values. Mr. Guzman has taught many of us about being a hard worker, committed, humble, and generous. I've known each of these individuals since I was 13 years old. I've had the pleasure of being a student and a colleague while all of them have been at KF. And I can say with certainty that the school will not be the same without them. I love you all very much, and I thank you for your service. Mr. Carlos Guzman, Ms. Ann Spellman, and Dr. Christopher Spellman, anything I set up here would not do you justice. Please stand and receive applause in honor of your service at Q Forest. Congratulations to Dr. Spellman and Ms. Spellman on your retirement. Well, for Chris, it's a semi-retirement since you'll be here teaching myth. And as I said to my faculty when I announced he wasn't returning, imagine what I would have been like if he wasn't going to be here at all. So congratulations to the both of you and congratulations to Mr. Guzman as he starts his own business. We will miss you very much. This past Friday, we held the Upper School Awards Assembly, where many members of the graduating class received awards for their academic performance, their leadership, and their personal qualities. Four awards are reserved for graduation, and so I will now present these final four graduation awards. The Founders Award is given in memory of Guy H. Catlin, co-founder of the Q Forest School, to the senior whose many contributions to the Q Forest School reflect a spirit of enthusiasm and a commitment to excellence. This year, the Class of 2023 Founders Award goes to Michaela Brown and Lauren, and Lauren Wilkes. that there's Photoshop editing, because The Marriott Award, in memory of Louis D. Marriott, co-founder of the QFAR School, is given to that student who has shown the greatest personal growth and development during his or her career at Q Forest. The 2023 Marriott Award for showing the greatest personal growth and development goes to Daniela Somershaf and Antonios Vareles. The 
The Millar Cup is awarded to that student who, through his or her contributions, has had the greatest positive impact on the Q Forest community. The 2023 Millar Cup for having the greatest positive impact on the Q Forest school community goes to Paul Domiano and Eva Sarter. Johnson Award, established by the Student Council of 1974 in memory of their beloved headmaster, is given to that member of the graduating class who best exemplifies the Q Forest qualities of character, service, and academic excellence. This year's recipient also received five awards at our Upper School Awards Assembly on Friday. The 2023 Wilson M. Johnson Award for Character, Service, and Academic Excellence goes to Rick Zhang. Congratulations to all of our award winners. And now, I'd like to introduce our 2023 commencement speaker, Chris Okada, class of 1998. Christopher Okada, or Chris, is a prolific deal maker, entrepreneur, and CEO of Okada and Company, a multifaceted commercial real estate development management and brokerage firm based in New York City. Since 2002, Okada has focused on tenant representation of small and medium-sized companies, as well as the sales and leasing of middle market buildings across Manhattan. He was mentored by his father, Naomi Okada, one of the most sought after commercial real estate brokers in New York, for years prior to launching his own firm, Okada & Company. To date, the firm has transacted nearly $1.5 billion of commercial real estate sales and leasing. Chris is a passionate speaker, blogger, and thought le thoughtful leader within the commercial real estate landscape. He has been featured in numerous publications, including the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, The Real Deal, New York Post, Crane's New York Business, Commercial Observer, and many others. He currently serves as the chairman of the Commercial Real Estate at Asian American Real Estate Association of America and is a longtime volunteer and youth advocate at Our Lady of Lourdes School. Please welcome Christopher Okada. Before I begin, uh, just a couple things. I asked the students on this day, it's such an incredible day. How do you guys feel? They all said the same thing, weird. So parents, you're gonna have a bunch of weird kids coming home just to you know, give you a warning. And secondly, I'm wearing Miss Trotter's graduation gown. So I wanna let you guys know, this is the type of leader she is. She gave me her gown because the one they had for me was way too big. So um, let's begin with um, what an incredible day. Head of school Trotter, board of trustees, faculty, families, and distinguished guests, it's an honor to return to the QFAR school for this graduation ceremony. And this is the school's 105th uh, graduation and is for the class of 2023. The seniors, you guys did it. Congratulations, a round of applause for the seniors. Today is a remarkable day it, uh, for the seniors. You should be proud of the hard work, sweat, and the tears that brought you to this moment. Even more incredible, you are the first class of high school students to graduate after the official end of the COVID-19 global pandemic. You did it, but you didn't do it alone. 
You are where you are because of the people who love you, friends who laughed with you when you needed it, faculty who guided you virtually and in person through the most challenging and confusing days of all of our lives, and most importantly, your family who supported you when it seemed like the world was falling apart. These are the people who molded you into the person you are today, and today that person is successfully graduating high school, closing this chapter of your life and entering adulthood. What an incredible journey you have ahead of you, a new chapter of your life, and guess what? You get to choose your own adventure. I hope you make it absolutely incredible. I graduated from Q Forest 25 years ago today, and being a lifer, I spent 12 years, because they didn't have pre-K, it was first grade, 12 years behind these walls. And this place remains very, very special to me. And since graduating in 98, I went off to uh, graduate from college, I worked for my father, started my own company, became financially independent, purchased real estate, got married, traveled the world, and so many, and had so many fun times with friends and family. I'm fortunate to have had these experiences, and you guys have no idea what life has in store for you. And that is half the fun. When Ms. Trotter invited me to, to speak today, my first thought was, what would I tell my 18-year-old self? What advice would I, could I possibly give myself? And this is what I came up with, four simple but important truths. Number one is time. Time is the most precious, important, rare, and priceless commodity we all have. For all the money in the world, you, can, you cannot buy back this day once it ends. Spend it wisely. Spend your time with people that are good to you, who uplift you. You will realize as you get older that the time you spend with friends and family shrinks every single year. Spend time with your parents and your family and your friends. And although this seems like common sense, one day you may not be able to do so. Take lots of photos and videos and more, and, and most importantly, be present. Today is one of the most important days of your life so far, and in just a few minutes, it'll be over. So soak in this moment right now and try to be totally present. Number two is love. Love is also one of the most important, precious, and fragile gifts life has to offer. Love genuinely and nurture and treasure the connection, whether it be love of friends, love of spouse, your family, your team, your work. Because it's so important, it can also be one of the most difficult things. It'll cause heartbreak, pain, confusion, and frustration along the way. But loving is the key to life. Do not be afraid to love. Learn to forgive and ask for forgiveness, and most, important, most importantly, learn to love yourself and surround yourself with those who lift you up. Number three, and this is a, a, a real big one for me, is redemption. We all make mistakes. You, me, your parents, everyone here. It's how, it's how you learn, respond, and redeem yourself that makes all the difference in the world. I left Q Forest and started my freshman year uh, at a business school in Boston. It was my first time being away from home and the first time I had the freedom to make my own decisions. Unfortunately, I did not make good decisions. Uh, one, poor, one poor decision cost me a lot. Just 45 days into my freshman year in college, I got into a bad fight, and it ended up getting me expelled. Not only was I embarrassed to come home back to Queens, only 45 days after I left, my mom, who's sitting right here, <laughs> sorry, mom. <laughs> my mom was absolutely livid, and my father was just hopeless and disappointed. This was the first time in my life I had no one but myself to blame. It was also the first time I, I really looked in the mirror 
to find out why this happened, what I needed to do to redeem myself and win back the respect of my family and most importantly, to get me back on the right track. So I got a job right here on Austin Street and a month later, I applied to SUNY Albany. The time, this time applying for college was about redeeming myself and about getting the job done. Not only did I graduate on time, I did it with honors and I had so much fun and made lifelong friends. On the day of graduation for, for, the col for, for college, my whole family was there to see me and though that one day took me three and a half years to redeem myself, the redemption was complete. This experience taught me a valuable lesson. Our mistakes do not define us. It is the response to them that shapes our character and learned, I learned the importance of accountability and resilience. I also learned about prayer and having a vision or a plan and to never let it happen again. And number four, and this is, if anything, I know it's like 10 speakers and all kinds of things, but try to remember this one. Never give up. Life often confronts us with challenges and obstacles that will test us. It may be at work, it may be at home, it may be in your marriage, it may be your health. You will be challenged. And when you are, you must remember to never, ever, ever give up. Fear is our built-in warning system serving to protect us in times of danger. However, every time you are about to have a major life breakthrough, fear and self-doubt will also show up. You may hesitate, questioning if you have what it takes to succeed, questioning is this real? Maybe you won't believe it because you didn't succeed in the past. You must have faith that everything will work out for you, but the only way to get to the other side of this fear is to never give up. Every successful person you admire, every achievement that inspire you, inspires you had mountains of problems and every single one of them would have failed if they gave up. Our company is in commercial real estate in Midtown Manhattan. And when the pandemic hit, Manhattan was an absolute ghost town. Everyone left and the news media said, New York City is dead. I thought that 18 years of hard work had been brought to an end just like that in 30 days. In June of 2020, I even went down to Palm Beach because it seemed like everyone was moving to Florida. I stayed with my best friend, got an office, tried to see what this life was for me, but it wasn't. There wasn't the energy, there wasn't the buzz. This was not New York City. So I came back home more determined and hungrier than ever before, and today we expanded our market share by more than double, and last year was our biggest year yet. This is one small example of how you must never give up. Even if it seems like the whole world is doing the opposite and the news media is saying you're wrong, you must somehow find a way to remember to never, ever, 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 ever give up. Remember, in a nutshell, spend your time wisely love others and yourself truly if you make a mistake redeem yourself and let it propel you to the next level and find the courage and the resilience to never ever give up if you're willing to do these simple things your life will be an an epic adventure and it begins today congratulations to the class of 2023 let's hear it for you Thank you, Chris. And now I ask that you all please rise and join us in singing the Q Forest alma mater, whose lyrics can be found in the program and on the screen to your right.
have been waiting for, the awarding of the diplomas. At Q Forest, we do not give our diplomas out alphabetically. We give them out in a random order with the understanding that the last graduate to receive her or his diploma will leave KF with some extra good luck. Joining me for the distribution of the diplomas will be board chair, Mr. Christopher D'Amato, and head of school, Ms. Tiffany D. Trotter. Mr. D'Amato and Ms. Trotter, I now present to you the class of 2023. <laughs> Tamis Janelli Cabrera. Amira Jai Burke. <laughs> Paul Stephen Domiano. Gabrielle Leslie Beatrice Hart. Ruchi Chung. Vaca Labre. James Gordon Somers Archer. Michaela Shearman Brown. <laughs> K. 
Cassandra Maya White. Hong Kai Huang. Daniela Anat Somershev. Eva Camille Sarder. Lauren Riley Wilkes. Will the remaining five seniors please stand? Rashad Ajam. Sebastian Bravo Romero. Antonios Varelas. Is out of the bag. Cameron Edward Smith. Class of twenty twenty three, please stand. You may now switch your tassels from the right side to the left. <laughs> Audience members, I now present to you the graduated class of 2023. Congratulations.
You may be seated. Before I explain the process for exiting, I would like to take a moment to thank some individuals who may not be on the stage with me, but have worked tireless, tirelessly behind the scenes to make today's ceremony possible. Please hold your applause until I finish all names in alpha order by first name. AJ, Alex, Carlos G, Carlos M, Chris, Fred, Harold, Jacqueline, Jennifer C, Jennifer W, John, Julio, Lalita, Linda, Prince, Sean, and Tiffany. <laughs> Audience members, please, please remain seated as I explain the process for exiting the space. The first people to exit the gymnasium will be our graduates. They will process out, pick up a goodie bag, and their rows and wait outside for you to join them. The next people to exit will be our faculty and staff, followed by the board members and Ms. Trotter. Finally, I will dismiss the remaining audience members who will exit through the middle doors to join the graduates for photo opportunities, rows presentations, and speaking with faculty members. Graduates of the class of 2023, please stand. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> and we may begin.
Congratulations, class of 2023. Go forth with confidence, and don't forget about us when you're rich and famous. Although you've attended high school through challenging and unpredictable times, you've proven yourself to be adaptable and resilient. And the proof of your success is that you're graduating. Congratulations on your growth and accomplishments and best wishes for a happy, healthy, and meaningful future in the years ahead. This is Miss Lazar from Preschool Pre-K. Uh, congratulations. Uh, we'll miss you. Don't forget about us and stay safe out there. Best of luck. Good luck, class of 2023. Have fun. Congratulations, Key 4 seniors. It's your time. The moment that you've waited for, your graduation. All your hard work and accomplishments have paid off. We will miss you very, very much. Please remember Key Forest and come back and visit. And to those graduating Kaleidoscope members, thank you for all your help and support over the years with connecting the lower school to the upper school. It's been fantastic working with you and I cannot thank you enough for all your help and support. Again, congratulations, seniors. Hey, class of 2023, it's Mr. Bernie. Uh, I just wanted to say congratulations. And uh, oh boy, what a high school experience that you have. The last few years have been crazy but you made it through and you've done really well and we couldn't be more proud of you. And uh, yeah, listen, we wish you all the best in all your future endeavors. And so good luck out there and please be careful. Thank you. Congratulations class of 2023. I've enjoyed working with you over the years and I'm impressed with all the progress you've made. I wish you the best in the future. Hey seniors, well done. I'm very proud of you. It's so Nice to see how much you've grown since you had my class freshman year. I'm so excited for what you're going to get to do when you go off to college. It's going to be very different, but it's going to be a chance for you to continue to grow. I hope you enjoy it. Congratulations. Hi seniors, congratulations on graduating. I'm so happy for all of you and I hope this year was nothing short of amazing. I wish you all the best, and I know you're going to be doing amazing things in the future, and I can't wait to hear all about it. Be sure to come back and visit. Bye. Congratulations, class of 2023. You made it. Good luck with everything, and we are all cheering for you. Congratulations, seniors. You made it. You've accomplished so much over the past four years, including teaching me quite a lot. Hi, seniors. I can't imagine you for us without your energy. You are such amazing athletes and scholars, artists and inventors. Your energy is going to go out into the world. And I hope that you're going to visit us often and we're going to miss you. Bye, seniors. Have a great journey. Hola, mis queridos estudiantes. Eh, los felicito mucho por un día tan especial como el día que se han graduado de Q Forest. Es un colegio fabuloso, pero ustedes son unos estudiantes muy fabulosos. Éxito a todos. Chao. Congratulations, my lovely class of 2023. Caps off to you. This milestone is just a stepping stone for more success to come in your future. Just keep believing in yourself and you can achieve anything you want. Congratulations to you all. With lots of love, Miss Carr of 23 congratulations your graduation day is finally here how many obstacles how many hoops did you have to go through but you made it the day goes by really fast so um hope you enjoy it i'm miss aragon assistant director of the development and alumni relations department uh, you may not know to me too well but you will because now you'll become part of our alumni community and my job is to make sure that you stay connected to us and we stay connected to you. So be sure to answer my emails when I write you, okay? Uh, we'd like to see you back soon. 
um, participating in our KF events. For those of you who have crossed paths with me a lot, it's probably because you did volunteer work. And so I want to really thank you. Uh, you have a special place in my heart. I wish you all the best of luck, much success. Stay well, stay healthy. Be safe. Bye-bye. Good morning, and to the class of 2023, and a special good morning. You know, in 24 years of working in independent schools, I've seen a lot of students graduate. But of all of those students, you, class of 2023, have a spot in my heart. Very special spot, because when I first set foot in KF, it was members of your class who greeted me and told me all about this wonderful community. And in my very first year, it was members of your class who were part of my advisory. And over the years since then, I have watched you all grow and learn, become more and more the beautiful human beings that you are. I've seen you engage in clubs, tackle hard classes, lead teams, not just to victories, but through challenges and losses and come out stronger. I've seen you impress alumni down in Washington, DC, judges at Model UN conferences, athletic directors from other schools, motivating them to call, reach out, talk about how impressed they were. I've seen you impress the local community down at the community hall. So whether you have been here for one year or the entirety of your Q Forest educational journey, you have done great things. And I am so proud of you, so impressed. Can't wait to see and hear about all that you do beyond Q Forest. Congratulations on your graduation. It's time to say goodbye I hope that we don't cry At least we'll try So dry your eyes Thanks for the ride
Thank you.